So this is going to be a bit more of an off the cuff kind of video. Uh, there's not much production value or anything, but this morning uh, I was interviewed by um, SBS News uh, for a piece they were doing on the City Point saga. Now, if you don't know, uh, City Point Church, uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, put out um, some amendments to their student contract, which basically made it so um, they weren't weren't to respect uh, transgender students' pronouns uh, and also advocate against LGBT lifestyles, et cetera, et cetera. Now, um, obviously, um, this was a quite a heated issue. Uh, and um, I think that it's obviously had it's had quite a large um, public outcry from the community. And I just want to read some of the article in which I was interviewed for and also um, provide some, maybe some context. So City Point Saga must result in cultural change. Former students and LGBT, LGBTIQ plus advocates say, I've got a little bit of dyslexia, so <laughs> apologize if my reading isn't too good. The principal of City Point Christian College in Brisbane has stood aside following a row, or, uh, row over an enrollment contract condemning homosexuality. But members of City Point community and LGBTQ plus advocates calling for changes say that's not enough. This article contains references to suicide. City Point Christian College needs to send a much stronger message than just asking its principal to stand aside and take extended leave. So Brian, the principal, has um, is, uh, has taken some leave. Um, if it is to undo some of the damage it has inflicted on the community, members of the City Point community and Brisbane-based LGBTIQ plus advocates have said, Brian Mulharan, the principal of the Christian school in Brisbane, said in the statement that he has decided to stand aside and take extended leave in order to reflect on what has transpired to revive the, um, the college community time to heal. Mr. Malhara's statement followed several days of uproar over the school's contract that stated that the college will only enroll the students on the basis of their gender that corresponds to their biological sex, and said homosexuality is sinful, like bestiality, incest, and pedophilia. See, I think that's a big part where they screwed up. They kind of, they kind of like stuck all the sins together. It would be kind of like saying... Um, you know, gluttony is a sin, um, like uh, murdering or, or genocide is a sin. You know, like it's like, uh, okay, like I guess, I guess it's true, but like in regards to like the Bible's morality, but like you kind of, yeah. The contract was eventually withdrawn after backlash. Children need to be supported. Former City Point student Jared uh, Mifsad welcomed the decision by, um, by Mr. Mulharan to stand aside, but said that, um, what is really needed is a cultural change and the use of inclusive language across faith-based institutes that instinct um, that interact with young people. Telling a 14-year-old that they are going to hell for the rest of their life because of who they are, that is a type of language that can't be in our schools anymore. The 30-year-old, who is also a performing artist and dancer, told SBS News, as a 14 or 15-year-old teen teenager in my formative years, it has such a detrimental and lasting impact on someone. Having graduated in 2009 after 12 years at City Point, Mr. Misfud, Mifsud sorry, said that the language condemning homosexuality was very damaging to himself and other young people navigating their gender and sexual identity. I knew I was gay when I was 15 years old, but the fear that had been instilled in me by religion made me pursue religion for a number of years with a zealous fire. I've noticed a huge, that's actually a huge thing. I noticed that I noticed a few people who are really passionate about their um, religion end up kind of trying to escape something. Uh, and in a couple of cases I know, but definitely one, it was um, they were in a marriage, but they were with a woman, but they were a homosexual man. And they eventually, it eventually come crumbling down. But basically anytime they were um, turned on or had sinful thoughts, they would go and pray and worship and everyone saw them as super spiritual and really they were just fighting their urges. I look back on those days and all I can see is a teenager who was hurting, who didn't know what to do or who to turn to. I came from a beautiful, supportive family and because of the fear, I felt like I couldn't even talk to them. Oh, this is such, this is so frustrating too that I feel like, this is probably true obviously, but I feel like, I feel like there'd be pressure to actually mention that you come from a good family because a lot of the time in Christianity, people think that you, you get turned gay from like bad circumstances, like maybe you're abused or something. They can't accept the fact that people just may be attracted to people of the same sex. And I, I feel like, you know, look, I was from a supportive and, and a happy family. Like I feel like it becomes like this thing that 
it's like burdened again on people's people of the LGBT community, um, and it's, it's not cool. It must be frustrating. And this is what it does. It isolates people. And in that isolation, this is where the danger lies because they feel like they um, they don't have nowhere else to turn. And that is why the suicide and self-harm in the LGBT, LGBTIQ plus youth are so high. Sorry, I'm not trying to be dis, uh, offensive. I just get muddled up with the terminology with um, LGBTIQ plus. He said it has been heartbreaking for him to hear how many current and former students at religious schools have been suffering and he urged anyone in need to seek help and I further agree with that with a psychologist, not like a random church pastor. The amount of people who have um, reached out to me over the last week just to share their stories with me has absolutely broken my heart. Yes, that's exactly the same. My first, The first episode of the Deep Drinks podcast was with my friend who was a closeted homosexual for 45 years, I think it was, uh, and now he's in a happy long-term relationship out of the closet and loving life. Um, there are people who are in their 50s and 60s who are still dealing with the trauma that has been inflicted to them by a church or a religious school. Back when they were at school, it was 10 times worse. It was It is lasting trauma and the last... And the last week has brought that up for a lot of people. This is the same thing that happened when the plebiscite was coming around. He said that the current and former students, along with parents who called for the contract to be withdrawn, want is for children to be supported in inclusive environments throughout society. And what if a child enrolled in a religious school by their parents is a member of the LGBTIQ plus community? What are they supposed to do? What if they don't feel safe coming out? They need to be supported somewhere. That is why for me, at the end of the day, a school's first and foremost responsibility is the safety and well-being of those children. Anything else comes second. That's brilliant. I like that. Okay, now onto my bit. The problem is systemic. Dave McDonald, that's me, who in 2009 worked... Um, used to work as an unordained youth pastor for Noosa Church, a City Point associated church, said the outcry for the contract um, should be celebrated. I don't think that they have done enough to undo the damages, but I don't um, know what else they could have could do because the problem is systemic amongst religious, religious organizations all over the world, Mr. McDonald told SBS News. So I think they cut out the start of that where I said, I think I said something like, they've probably done enough but they also probably haven't done and like they probably there's not much more they could do because like stepping down like what else could you do besides stepping down maybe like you could have like a conference or like say we were wrong and all that stuff but the where they was where they would say that they're wrong would be a contradiction of some of their like biblical values or something right um and my video was more about the problems in just picking and choosing parts of the morality to use. So like, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna let people who are divorced to be on the faculty, you need to let, uh, you know, you can't just pick and choose your morality. Um, And so I don't know, like, I don't know um, what else they could do. So I guess in a way it's enough, but at the same time, I don't think it's enough to like undo the damage that has been done from this. Um, and obviously on the other side of the coin with this is a lot of Christians may feel persecuted at this. And this is something that we need to remember that Christians who don't see the problems of, um, you know, um, LG, people, members of the LGBT community being hurt, they, they just see it. it's like, well, hang on, we want to run our own school under our own, with our own um, creeds and traditions. Why can't we do that? And so, yeah, the, the conversation is big. And that's why I said, um, that it's, the problem is systemic amongst religious organizations all over the world, not just Christianity. And it needs to, the conversation needs to be had. And something else I mentioned that I don't think they mentioned is there needs to be a conversation between the community and religious organizations. Um, and I don't, I don't know if they'll ever see eye to eye, but at least people, I think, need to understand where the other side is coming from. Um, so at least there can be a bit more grace towards each other. Um, Mr. McDonald um, received the certific- a certificate in Christian ministries from the Australian College of Ministries in 2009. The certificate was signed by Mr. Mulharan, who at the time, that's so such a wacky coincidence, who at the time uh, was the Learning Centre Director of City Point Ministry College. And there's one handsome mother. 
I think we should. Um, I think what should be celebrated is the community outcry following this event, because obviously the problem is much bigger and it's happening everywhere. He said. Now it's the end of my bit. Psych- psychologist Paul Martin said the school needs uh, a stronger uh, needs to send a stronger message of support to young LGBTQ plus people. The problem with the current message is if he's stepping aside, he will come back. And if the school is saying that he's going to come back, they're still supportive of him in some ways. Dr. Martin, who has been um, counselling LGBTQ plus people aged 16 or more for the last 30 years. What has happened at the school it, um, is so, um, so uh, physiologically harmful that it could, for some people, be a trigger for suicidality. And that's something that they asked me as well. They said, do you think this is going to be like, this is, you know, harmful to students, not just inside of City Point, but also, you know, around Australia or around the world who see this article and see that the school is taking a stance? And my answer was, yeah, like 100%. We know um, the psychological uh, effects of um, of discrimination against certain groups of people. Now, this isn't like discrimination for people who love hot sauce, right? Or or discrimination for something trivial like um, you know for people who have like a certain hairstyle or something like that. This is like something that's deeply ingrained in these people's identity. Like it's not something that they've chosen necessarily. It's something that they've they they uh, they are they are gay they are transgender they are you know and obviously a lot of the time um, people experiment through these years and things like that and they may like shift a little bit you know, back and forth a, a lot of it's on the spectrum I think is the current understanding but like these things are like you you're, you're not rejecting something you're in, you're not rejecting the sin you're rejecting the person um, so that's like a big problem. Um, what has happened at the school? Yeah, I covered that. They need to show that they have changed their thinking. According to Shelley Argent, the political liaison officer of the Brisbane chapter of Parents, Family and, Fr- and Friends of Lesbian and Gays, PLAG, the school needs to take more responsibility for its actions. They need to show that they have, ch- they, they need to show that they have changed their thinking and that they are supportive of young people, Mrs. Miss Agent said. They need to come out and public publicly stating that um, there has been an error in their judgment and their thinking, and they agree that they were wrong. And they also need to actively work now to show that they're supportive of young people, she said. Miss Agent said that the entire City Point Christian College episode is indicative of what Australia would be up uh, would be up for if the proposed religious discrimination bill comes into existence. This is a prime example of why a religious discrimination bill likely to be legislated by Scott Morrison is so dangerous because it gives um, schools like this too much power and it's uh, the wrong power because it judges people, he said. When you send your child to school, you don't send them to be judged. You send them to be educated. That is such a good point. But many religious schools judge that that makes it very difficult for students to learn, he, um, she said. Three years after the election promises to legislate on religious freedoms... Prime Minister Scott Morrison has indicated he is keen to, pre- to proceed with the draft uh, with the draft religious discrimination bill over the next fortnight as Parliament sits. You need to reduce mental health impacts. You're being judged for years, and then um, for something like this to happen is the biggest threat to my mental health um, for young LGBTIQ plus people. Dr. Martin said. Many people in evangelical Christian communities and even the evangelical conservative Protestant families still hold on to outdated beliefs about homosexuality. So there's already pre-existing damage in young LGBTIQ plus people, he said. When people like this um, happen to send a very powerful message to kids that all of these beliefs are correct and can be a trigger for young people who's struggling with mental health to commit suicide, it's extremely dangerous, he said. According to a survey published by LGBTIQ Plus Health Australia in 2000, April 2021, 11% of LGBTIQ Plus people aged 16 to 17 have attempted suicide in the past 12 months, and 25% of them have had attempted suicide in their lifetime. That's insane. We know that discrimination for someone's sexual gender identity is harmful, and we know that members of the LGBTIQ plus community still have the highest rates of suicide out of any group of people. So it's very damaging, Mr. McDonald said. Oh, <laughs> hey, that's that's me. Yep. What a brilliant man that man is. 
Parents of young LGBTIQ plus students can play a crucial role in preventing suicides among young people, Dr. Martin said. I would quote a wonderful man, American Skull and Humans um, of Human Sexuality, Milton Diamond, who said, Nature loves variety. So- society hates it. That's great. And one of the things parents um, can say to the children is, we are supposed to be diverse and let them know that they are loved as they are, Dr. Martin said. That's awesome. That's a really good quote at the end. So, yeah, the, the, my thoughts on this article is it's, a, it's an interesting article. I think it just kind of continues the message forward that it's really good that the community came together and, like, s- stood up strong. Bethany Lau, I think it was, the start of the original change.org pe- um, petition. Uh, fantastic work. Um, this this stuff needs to be called out wherever it is around. And this is how society progresses into uh, a better society. And this is what we're currently doing. Thank you for watching and thank you for me- reading this um, article. And thank you, SBS News, for giving me the opportunity to be interviewed. Thank you. Bye.